Welcome back to the Morning Blend. Today, an ear, nose, and throat specialist joins us with what you need to know about the COVID-19 virus. Dr. Medlin Candula is board certified. He is a sleep and sinus surgeon with Advent. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning, good morning. Thanks for joining us from a safe distance. It's good to see you. We appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you, thanks for having me. All right, let's break it down um, and, and put this virus into simple terms. To start, I think a lot of people are wondering why this virus is creating such a crisis right. for us. Yeah, and that's and, and I think that's where, you know, my, my, one of my hopes to appear today is just kind of dispel some myths and just make maybe give a little bit of, of sense of calm to this. So this virus, so coronavirus is, is what everybody's termed this as. Coronavirus is actually, it's a family of viruses. So this is one particular type of coronavirus. Um, there are other types, there are about seven that humans can get infected with, and a few of them are, are really not that uh, serious, so more like a cold, uh, maybe a mild flu, that's the majority of them. There are a couple that are really severe and actually more severe than this one. So a, a, a term that we're using for this is COVID-19. So COVID-19 is sort of a middle of the road coronavirus. So it's a, a virus that can, can spread from human to human uh, via respiratory droplets. Um, most folks who get COVID-19 um, it's not a, a severe disease. It's actually more of a mild disease, a moderate disease. And I think you've seen that uh, in the public as people have talked about it. The challenge is, is that for some individuals, this can be a very severe disease. And there's no definitive way to, to predict how somebody's gonna do. Uh, when we look at the, the data and we look at the demographics, the, the elderly population is significantly at a higher risk to do poorly, as are folks who have immune compromised issues and as are folks who have issues with their lungs and their heart uh, baseline. So if you've got some, you know, if you kind of think about that, well, what's going on there? If you have some issues underlying, and age is a factor, so as we get older, our immune system is weaker, our, our ability to fight back from things uh, goes down. And so our ability to handle a challenge goes down. And so this is um, a, a virus that's, that enters through the nose or the mouth or the eyes, and just like a flu virus, just like a cold virus. But uh, the difference here is that it's novel. So it's something that we haven't seen, uh, you know, humans haven't seen this. It's been tr uh, transmitted through animals uh, for a while now. The fact that it's, it's jumped from animals to humans, that's the big factor. And the fact that because humans haven't seen it, we haven't developed the normal immunity that normally goes along with the viruses that we typically experience uh, kind of year after year. There's so many good points there. And I think, you know, if, if I'm hearing what you've said and, and what we've heard and read is that most people are at low risk, yet all of us are affected because of the shutdown and because of the stay at home orders. Why is that staying at home part so important with this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, that it's, it's really this duality, and I think that's, it, it's sometimes hard to grasp two things in your head at the same time. So on one hand, for most folks who get this, and likely many of us are gonna get this virus over time, uh, it's not a severe illness. On the other hand, um, you know, for some folks it, it is severe and it's severe enough that they, it, it shuts their respiratory system down, meaning that they need help to breathe, meaning that they need to be in an ICU on a ventilator. And so you have these two realities that are coexisting. And so the shutdown or the safer at home is really trying to prepare for the storm that's coming. And for folks who are, who are following st these statistics, the case numbers are going up, the, the deaths are going up. That's expected. So, you know, that's not a surprise. That shouldn't be shocking. I think, unfortunately, in the media and on the Internet, it gets sort of sensationalized in a negative way. Uh, the reality is it's here. It's happening. It's a bit, it, it, I'm trying to, I've been trying to analogize this in my head, but it's sort of like if, if you know a hurricane is coming, uh, you prepare for it. And the safer at home is our, our, our societal duty to prepare for the storm that's coming. So the less that we're around others and the less that we're spreading this, that, that we can flatten the curve is what, you, what you've heard. And so what we're trying to do right now, all that's happening right now is to uh, really stay away from each other, to minimize spread so that the the impact of this to the healthcare system is minimized, the initial impact. And so we haven't seen it yet. You see the numbers are escalating. All that we're trying to do is make it manageable so that when those that need help uh, reach out to the healthcare system, that there are resources available. If 
this is spread rapidly in, in our environment right now, it will overwhelm the system and create a massively worse problem than what exists right now. So it's sort of this, this weird dynamic of preventative um, maintenance or preventative care right now really goes a long way. Um, ideally, you know, we'll see how it plays, but what the numbers are looking like is over the next couple weeks is where things should escalate, hit a peak, uh, once we kind of have that peak event on, okay, we really are, are in, the, in the worst of it, then well, I think we'll have a better sense as to how, how we're going to move things forward. We're not going to be in this situation forever. This isn't going to be our new reality for forever. And there's so much insight, I know, too, that we can learn from other countries about how they've handled this. Yeah, I mean, it's really this is spreading around the world and, and other countries have, had, have experienced this before we have. Every country is different. Every population is different. If you look at some countries like Italy, especially, they've got an elderly population and how it spread has really affected that that group uh, significantly. And so, you know, it's going to be, a, you know, this disease in America is going to be different than it is in Italy, but we can learn some lessons there. Uh, testing is coming. So there is going to be testing that's going to, there's testing that's here right now, but it's very, very limited. Uh, testing that's widely um, available is going to be a game changer. That is coming. Once we can do that, that really will flip the, 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 the script on this to um, right now it's really a matter of everybody's trying to protect everybody. Eventually it'll be really, I think those folks that are high risk will need to stay protected for a, a, quite a while. Those that are maybe lower risk, once we get past this initial phase, um, we'll be able to get back to, to sort of a new reality of life. And so those things can happen. That's already happening in China, in South Korea, elsewhere in the world that, that have experienced this first. Um, they're starting to open things up and, and that'll come our way down down the road. Dr. Candula, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. You too. And I know one of the things that you recommend, which is wonderful, is keeping your mind sharp. And something you can do is take an Ivy League school. You can take courses from like schools like Yale and Harvard. They're actually offering free online courses. So check out uh, the website for more information about that because keeping a routine and learning is always important to staying healthy too. Here's the information so that you can get in touch with the experts at Advent. You can go to adventknows.com to learn more about their practice. You can also email them directly, info at adventknows.com. And the phone number for an appointment and more information is 414-771-6780.